Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to solve this nice little math word problem. Let's go ahead and read the problem now. It says a tire at 36 PSI is losing pressure at a rate of 0.1 uh, PSI per second. How many seconds till the tire is at 30 PSI? And for those of you that don't know what this uh, acronym means, PSI, that, st that stands for pounds per square inch, when you fill up a tire, at least in the United States, uh, this is the rating you're looking at, right? So you don't want to overinflate your tire, whatever that might be, your bike tire, your car tire, whatever the case is. You're looking at how many PSIs, pounds per square inch, going to that tire. But anyways, just in case you didn't know what that uh, stood for. But this is the problem. Don't feel shy about using a calculator. All I would ask is, uh, if you're going to do this problem, is to have some sort of methodical, logical approach. In other words, justify your conclusions as if you're going to turn this in to a teacher for an exam or a uh, quiz. Okay, so that's always the way you want to approach a math problem is to write those steps down so people can follow your conclusion. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to solve this step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to, you know, um, you know, look at this problem. When you're dealing with any math word problem, you want to read it at least three times. Of course, we'll re uh, read it again here in a second. But if you need to pause the video to think about this, that's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. And again, the question is, how many seconds until the tire is at 30 PSI? It's currently at 36 PSI. Well, the answer is 60 seconds. So that is the correct answer. One minute. But of course, the question is how many seconds? So if you got this right, well, that's outstanding. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100%. And a few stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you solved an interesting math little word problem about tires and PSI and all that kind of good stuff. So um, if you're confused about this, well, this is not that difficult of a problem. And don't let these decimals... Um, and these kind of rates of change kind of bother you. What we need to be talking about here is converting, or not, um, it's really we're talking about units of measure, right? And then of course, oftentimes when we're talking about units of measure, we're talking about converting units of measure. In this particular case, that's not what we're doing, but we need to be really good with interpreting units of measure. So let's go ahead and get into the problem right now. All right, so again, when you're solving any problem in mathematics, you need to read the problem. Uh, at least three times, read it once, uh, just to get a sense of what's going on. Read it again to start kind of really, you know, building in more information about the specifics of the problem. And then at a minimum, that third time when you read the problem, you got to hone in on what is the question. Okay, so here again, we have a tire at 30, that's currently at 36 PSI. It has some sort of leak. Anyways, it's losing pressure, right? And it's losing pressure at this rate here, 0.1 PSI per second. So how many seconds until the tire is at 30 PSI? So what you want to do when you are facing any kind of math word problem is you want to construct some sort of model. And this can look different for different people as long as it makes sense to you and it makes sense to someone that you uh, show your work to. So stylistically, you know, I'm going to show you what I did here in a second, but drawing something out, you know, creating a, a figure, a sketch, a table, those, these are really good models uh, to construct. So, you know, for me, I want to kind of see this problem visually and what's going on. So here is what I did. Now, hopefully you did something similar. So here I have a tire. It's currently at 36 PSI and it is losing pressure and it's gonna go down six PSI because it's gonna go from 36 PSI to 30 PSI and it's losing pressure at this 0.1 PSI per second. Okay, so it's going down and then obviously um, we wanna know how many seconds it's gonna to take to go from here to here. Okay, so oftentimes a visual picture will help you kinda of at least, you know, um, see the problem 
uh, and it can help you, you know, really think about ways to get, you know, to um, basically ways to figure out the problem. And there's different ways you can think about the problem. There's, of course, only one solution, but you, you, again, you need to take all the information in the problem and kind of put it in one visual model so you can kind of see what's going on. But basically, most people are probably going to get confused with this part of the problem, this 0.1 uh, PSI per second. Okay, so this tire is going from 36 PSI and it's going to go down. We want to know how many seconds it's going to take until it uh, goes down to 30 PSI, i.e. it's going to drop 6 uh, PSI uh, in pressure. Okay, so it's going to go from 36, it's going to drop 6, and it's going to end up at 30 and this is what we call the rate of change, okay? So that's a fancy math word, but basically the pounds per square inch is changing by the second. It's going down uh, by 0.1. Now, technically, I could put a little negative in there because it is decreasing, but that's not really um, uh, ultra critical for this problem. But what is critical is that you understand that 0.1 PSI per second can be expressed as this uh, conversion factor, or not really conversion factor, but this basically, basically express it in this way. Okay, that oftentimes we have what we call a conversion factor, and it would look like this, but basically we have what we call a rate in mathematics, right? So I'm kind of throwing a lot of terms out there. So I don't want you to get lost, but there is a rate of change. Okay, let's just talk real quick about what a rate is. A rate in mathematics is like what? Well, Let's use that word rate in another way. So what if I said, what is, I see um, some cars zooming down the freeway, zooming down the turnpike, and they're, I want to know, what is the rate of that car? If I use that word rate, what does that mean? Well, oftentimes people also think of velocity or speed, right? So rate uh, is oftentimes associated with these things. So if you think about like, say, 60 miles per hour, okay? What's another way to write 60 miles per hour? Let me write it over here, 60 miles per hour. Well, this P right there is really a fraction bar. I can write it this way, 60 miles per hour. I can write it that way, but of course it's more uh, common to write it this way. Now rate, okay, These are. this is an example of a rate. I'm gonna explain to you exactly why here in just one second, but I want you to understand that this rate here, this is 0.1, PSI, I, this little fraction bar here, we could say, we could use the word per, okay? So 0.1 PSI per second. Matter of fact, we do say the word per. So when you hear that word per, or if you say it when you're describing a situation, you're dealing with a rate. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, uh, kind of define what a rate is, just in case you forgot. So a rate is essentially a fraction where the unit of measure, what you're measuring and the numerator and denominator are two completely different things, okay? So for example, actually, let me go back to my miles per hour deal here. So in the numerator here, let me just kind of squeeze it in. I have 60 miles, okay, per one hour. That's the rate of the car, i.e. the speed or the velocity. But in the numerator up here, I'm measuring miles, which is distance in the, in the, uh, in the denominator, I'm measuring hours, which is time. Okay, these are completely two different units of measure. And when you're comparing uh, two different units of measure, i.e. in a fraction like this, you're dealing with a rate. Now, some of you are out there saying, oh my goodness, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're giving me just too much information. You don't need on, you don't need to know all that stuff in order to solve this problem. Yes, that is probably true. Okay, a lot of you probably got the right answer, but here's the deal. Okay, at least if you're gonna watch my videos, I wanna really make sure you understand in detail the concepts that are going on. Really, really important stuff. All right, so we're dealing with a rate of change. Again, we're dealing uh, with that word rate. So if we notice here, our numerator is PSI, it's pounds per square inch. It has nothing to do with a unit of time seconds. Okay, so this is why this is a rate. And we wanna be able to express it, 0.1 PSI per second, as an actual fraction this way, okay? All right, so with that in mind, what we can do now is construct a uh, proportion, okay? So here, I know that my tire uh, is losing pressure at the rate of 0.1 PSI uh, per second. Well, what I wanna do is construct 
a proportion, okay? And a proportion is nothing more than two equal fractions. So let's just uh, look at the fraction one half. If I could think of another fraction that's equal to one half, well, what would that be? Well, let's kind of just use a simple one. Five over 10 could be four over eight, three over six, doesn't make a difference. The point I want to make is when you have two equal fractions, you have what we call a proportion in mathematics. And one thing is always true about proportions is that the cross product is always equal. In other words, one times 10 is 10 is always going to be equal to the cross product this way. In this case, it's two times five or 10. Okay. So uh, when you have a proportion, i.e. two equal fractions, the cross product is equal. And that's how, well, basically uh, the strategy that you want to take in order to solve a proportion problem. Okay, so I know I'm throwing a lot at you here, but you know this is really important stuff. So here, if um, we're losing 0.1 psi per one second, how many uh, seconds? Okay, that we don't know how many seconds. That's the question. So how many seconds is it going to take to lose six psi? Okay, whatever these this rate. Okay, these two things are going to be in proportion. All right. So uh, again. You know, you have to be able to interpret what's going on, and hopefully now you understand the big picture. Okay, so if, the, if you understand what's going on, now all we have to do is actually solve this proportion by using the cross product. So again, here is our rate of change, uh, 0.1 PSI per one second. Uh, we know that um, this tire is going to deflate 6 PSI in how many seconds? Well, whatever this rate is, it's going to be the exact same rate as this rate. Okay. All right. So we, now we want to solve for a second. So we're going to go ahead and use the cross product. So it's going to be X. Okay. So we want to know how many seconds, right? And one really important thing here is notice that my units of measure and the, uh, the denominator are seconds. So when you're uh, constructing a proportion, you got to make sure that the units of measure are in the same spot. So in the denominator, I have seconds and seconds, and then in the numerator, it's PSI and PSI. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go ahead and just use that cross product. So this is going to be X times 0.1. So we can kind of drop the units of measure for now and just focus in on the algebra. All right. So it's going to be X times 0.1 which of course is gonna be X times 0.1, and then one times this six. So I'll write that right there, or six times one. So now we're just gonna solve this basic equation for X. So X times 0.1 is 0.1X, six times one is six. So to solve for X, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 0.1. So six divided by 0.1 is 60. So X is equal to 60, but what is X? So remember when we set up our proportion, X representing how many seconds. Okay, so X is going to be in the units of measure of seconds. So X is equal to 60 seconds. That's how many seconds it's going to take for the tire to go from 36 PSI down to 60 at this rate of change. Okay, so hopefully, um, you know, hopefully you got this problem right in the beginning. If you did, if you did, but you didn't really kind of understand all the other details, well then, you know, hopefully this video kind of, you know, enhanced your math knowledge. That's the whole point of me making these videos is for you to learn something more than maybe you didn't know or to review important concepts like rates, ratios, proportions, all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, things that might appear to be kind of basic math can be far more interesting. And if you want to basically, um, practice more prompts like this. I have a ton of additional word prompts on my YouTube channel. Also, I would say this level of mathematics would be appropriate for those of you that are taking like pre-algebra or algebra one. So if you want to check out those courses at my math help program, you can certainly check those out. I have a ton of free uh, previews as well. They're very, very comprehensive. All my courses are very, very comprehensive. So if you are in a math course, you should really kind of at least kind of see what I have to offer. I think you'll be very happy uh, with, uh, uh, my program, okay, especially if you are struggling. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.